Good morning everybody. Welcome to Scott Rhodes. Today's plan, I would love to get these installed in the back of the car. But before that, I have to take these panels off and uh, re-drill some holes at the top because it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit floppy. So there will be a bit of fab work to do. I'm going to try and last a whole episode without saying brackets. Oh, fuck. This job will be much easier if I remove the wheels. Easier to get access in the inside, bit more height. All in all, easier. Also, while I'm underneath and it's jacked up, I'm going to lower the wheels or raise the body a bit more because it's still sitting a little bit low relative to the front. So that's fine, I've still got adjustment on the coilovers. So let me strip it apart again. So I thought I was going to have to drill holes and everything for for the fender to bolt up, but I do actually have all the holes. These are all kind of threaded, not threaded holes as such, but they do have nuts on the inside and they've got little securing tabs at either side. So I've got one, two, three, sorry you can't see a thing, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a missing one there, seven, which is plenty. The other side will definitely need to, I'll definitely need to add a few, but that's plenty to hold the fender on. Ooh, in. This section here I'm going to have to just hammer in a bit, it's been bent out of shape. So I'll hammer that in, and then I can bolt the fender back on, but I will need to add a couple of rods to keep the, the fender outwards, because it's kind of, it's kind of coming in that way. So I reckon probably just one at this corner. I don't think I'll need one there because it's quite close. It's quite, it's a lot narrower at the front, but the back com comes away out here. This point here is what I'm talking about is kind of folding in a bit. So I want a rod going from there in towards the body to keep it out. So let me attack that. Oh, while this is off, I'll get an assistant to put their foot in the brake and I'll torque the hub on. And Candy told me to do that because he was concerned they weren't tight enough and I totally agree. All criticism, advice and tips is much appreciated. Right, let me get this fender back on and bolt it up and then make a rod. I have a tiny bit of modification to do. When I welded this plate on here, I didn't really have anything to match up against because it was all rusted round about there. But as it turns out, this section here needs to be removed because there's no way for it to get close enough because it hits that. So I still want to be able to use this bolt hole and then if I chop this out it'll be able to get closer and that'll line up. So let me trim that off and hopefully everything should bolt up nice. So my dear friend Andy at Andy's Doghouse accused me of using a caulking gun as a clamp. This my friends is not a caulking gun, it's actually a very handy G clamp type thing. It's got the same mechanism as a caulking gun, but I think it was designed for wood because it's got a soft end. The other, <laughs> the other end kind of um, got lost in the passages of time. Anyway, it works good for quick release. I wouldn't actually made a set of these, to be honest, they're pretty handy. So let me just uh, demonstrate the not caulking gun. Like 
like so. Right, let me trim this off. I feel bad for using these uh, gloves that Glenn sent me for everyday use now, but I got them dirty, so I may as well. And you know what? They're actually really good all-purpose gloves. And I got a brand new set of gloves from Simon, which are a bit thicker, which are probably better for heavy welding. These still get quite hot, but as you can see, they might be dirty, but they're still great anyway on waffling. Let me trim, trim. Oh, that's the wrong disc. Ah, hold on a sec. You know what, I really need to, I need a grinding disc for every, for every, uh, not a grinder, I need a grinder for every use. But, not made of money. And uh, thanks again Jamie for sending me a new set of cutting discs. I've not broken into them yet. I've still got a couple left of the old stock. Right. Right, let's see if that now fits on the vehicle. Right, that seems to have done the trick. So it looks like my bolts are now, my bolt holes are aligning with the fender. So I'm going to try and attach all the bolts that I can, tighten them all up, and then I can work on the rod that brings that out. Right, now the, now the fender's attached properly at the top, you can see how much movement I've got there. And I currently, well, it's currently sitting there. I kind of want it out a bit there because it's getting a bit close to the wheel. So I'm just going to use a section of rod. I will bend it at that side, bend it at that side, make some sort of uh, attachment in there, some sort of attachment up there to bring it out. Possibly not that wide. Maybe, maybe about. Maybe a bit there. Right, let me do some bending and make some little clips to attach it. I really do think this is the noisiest street in Canada. Every day we've got some big truck making lots of noise. I can hardly hear myself grind. Oh, he's stopping right there to do stuff. That's just, that's just wonderful. Oh, great. Anyway, I've got my little spacer rod, fender, fender rod fit. Give me a name for this. So, as you can see, I ended up just using a couple of these uh, pipe clips, which actually works quite well because they offer a little bit of, a little bit of cushioning from vibration. And I used an existing hole that was on the underside of this panel, so I didn't have to weld or do anything silly down there. But the whole thing's pretty rigid now. Quite pleased. <sighs> Another thing done. Except the other side still needs done. So I'll, uh, I'll quickly get that done and hopefully get onto the lights, which is what I'm supposed to be doing. Skills are back. Right, this side is done. Nice and solid again. I've got my other. Exactly the same as the other side. Right. What was I doing? Oh, yeah, tail lights. Right, I need to tidy up my disaster. 
Ah, it's not it's not too much of a disaster as disasters go. Uh, back in a minute. Right, I'll show you what I have to work with. But first, I just want to say welcome to all my new subscribers recently. There's been quite a few, thank you very much. Do me a favour and leave a comment. If you didn't know, I do a map of world domination and it needs an update soon. So if you want on the next update, which might be this coming Sunday, make sure you leave a comment, let me know roughly who you are in the world and I'll stick a pin in the map just for you. And you get to choose your colour. I have every colour, trust me. And obviously if you've not subscribed, just just click that button. For going to say, it costs you nothing and it takes you less than a second. Please, thank you. Okay, right, what do we have? Model A F F Ford Model A replica headlight uh, taillights, which are gorgeous. They're not for this car, but it's all I've got. And you know what? They're kind of similar. The same sort of mounting thing as the Chevy. And next year, if the swap meets open up, I'll try and get the proper Chevy ones. But these, these are nice. And only die-hard hot rodders will actually know the difference. Okay, this one is good because it's got the clear lens at the bottom. So that'll get mounted on the driver's side rear and the license plate will get mounted underneath. So that's the driver's side. Passenger side is the same except it doesn't have the clear section at the bottom. Similar bracket. So I need to work out how I'm going to mount this onto my car. I think some grinding and hammering will be involved. So let me show you. So my plan will be to mount these roughly there-ish. So obviously this is designed to go on a flat surface and I've, I'm going to mount it on this pointy surface. But roughly that height and you know what, I'll just have to cut this here, bend that over and then I can mount that through there. Same at the other side and do something fancy at the top. Nothing, I'm not overthinking this. I just want it bolted to the car, nice and solid. These wires will get tucked up inside there. There'll be another hole in the middle and all the wires will go through the inside of the fender. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Well, as usual, I ran out of time and nuts. Let me show you how it looks so far. I think they're symmetrical. Now, not everyone's going to like the placement, but I will explain. 
I will explain why I've gone for the wings, the fenders, rather than in the middle. That reason would be, I prefer it. <laughs> I prefer it like this and also at some point I will be adding a rear bumper. So if they were too far in the bumper would feel like it sticks away out, whereas this way it should be in, kind of in line, the light should be kind of in line with the bumper when I fit one. At the moment the lights are a little bit further out than the back of the car. But as I say, once the bumper is fitted, it should be kind of in line. Maybe the lights will be slightly further back. Another school bus. So that's where we're at. Now I'll give you a close up. This is where I cut them, obviously. And what I'll probably do, I will I need to grind down this line a little bit and then I can bend these down, weld them in place and have a nice sort of curved mounting bracket all the way around. And I've still to drill the hole for the wires to go through so they're just tucked in there for now. So tomorrow I will continue making them look nice and drill the hole for the wires and wire them up and see how they look. That'll probably be a night shot though, because these are really nice lights, they give off a nice deep red. But that's where we're at for now. Right folks, that's me for today. Tune in tomorrow night for more nonsense. I will at least have the, the lights wired up enough to test them and see how they look. Okay. Right, uh, please subscribe and click the bell and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.